Reciprocity is the second of the three main theories that underpin the Solihull approach and understanding your child. These theories are containment, reciprocity, and then behavior management. Reciprocity describes the sophisticated interaction between a child and an adult where both are involved in the initiation or the start, the regulation, and the termination or the end of an interaction. Reciprocity starts as a baby is born and continues through childhood, but it can actually be seen in all forms of communication between people. Babies and parents or carers begin this subconscious interaction as they bond. As soon as a baby is born, their minds are wired to search out for faces and begin the process of learning through interaction and relationship. Reciprocity is almost like a dance between people, and it actually has seven stages that act as the steps in the process. The first is initiation. This is when two people begin the process of communication, and it often starts with some eye contact. Next, the second, is orientation. This orientation can be both physical or within the spoken communication. People move so the interaction can happen more comfortably. Maybe people will stand closer together, sit next to each other, or settle into place to begin the conversation. In adults, this often happens at a 90 degree angle, but with children and babies, they're often more comfortable facing each other. On from orientation is the state of attention. This stage can be very brief, but it's when both people take each other in. It's more obvious between an adult and a baby as they have more prolonged moment of gazing at length, but a state of attention moment will also happen with children and adults. It's a simple moment of eye contact and connection. Each of these first three stages can happen very quickly. The next, the fourth, is actually called acceleration. This begins when one person adds in the interaction begins. With babies, this may be the adult starting some facial expressions and a song or a story to which the baby responds with their own sound or facial expression or moves. With younger children and adults, this involves conversation as well as facial expressions and non-verbal communication. Within acceleration, it's common that the intensity tends to increase as the interaction progresses. The fifth stage is the peak of excitement for kids. You can imagine this peak of excitement quite easily, but we all have it. This is where the acceleration peaks into a moment where both people are most animated or expressive. This peak is often where the point of the story or the task is being resolved. The sixth stage comes as a natural deceleration. One person begins the winding down of the interaction. Within this step, you'll see less activity and a reduction in the intensity. Both people anticipate an ending to the conversation, and this can be shown through non-verbal and verbal communication. For babies, it's shown with looking away or putting their hands in their face, yawning or crying. And finally, the seventh stage, we have turning away or withdrawing. This step marks the end of an interaction. For babies, this is really important as their brains need space and time to process what they've just experienced. This time away from interaction actually allows them to consolidate what they've learned in that moment and for their brain to grow. It's important that adults don't misread this look away as rejection for babies and children and adults. The time after interaction is key for reflection and evaluation. So there it is, a beautiful and brain developing interaction. But let's be honest, they don't all go that way. So what happens if an interaction is broken at any one of these stages? Well, it's actually called rupture and repair. Lots of real life moments can rupture a conversation, some siblings fighting in another room, the phone going off, or someone in the interaction disagrees and the conversation stops abruptly. Whatever stops the dance of reciprocity, it's important for children that there's repair. Rupture is a normal part of interaction. But as the adults, we need to ensure that the repair is normal too. Staying focused on the interaction you're in with your child communicates to them value and worth. And even if the interaction is broken by some distraction, coming back to finish the interaction brings them hope and trust in us as adults. For children where interaction is limited, you'll see communication skills, speech and language can also be limited. Interactions that are often ruptured lead children to develop low self-worth, self-esteem issues, and a lack of trust in others. 
Repair, therefore, is a natural process of healing and bringing together the adult and the child to allow a peaceful relationship in which the child thrives and grows. Within the rupture of an interaction, children are more likely to feel unsafe, not listened to. These are moments in which their poor behaviour can increase as they try to handle their negative emotions at this point, and they'll often act out. At this point, if you're watching and can understand your child's feelings, reciprocity can be picked back up and repair can happen. In turn, bringing the child back to a place of peace and helping them feel valued. Reciprocity provides the safe base for children to feel attached to the adults around them, valued in their expression and secure in their identity and value.